it's, it's unfortunate that in the English language we use the same word for pain as a byproduct of disease and pain as a disease. And what I'll do in the next couple of minutes is not only explain the difference between the two, but argue that if you really understand what's the difference, what's the difference between pain as a byproduct of an injury versus when pain has nothing to do anymore with what you have had, we will attain sustainable happiness. Now the reason I talk about pain is not just because I'm a pain specialist, but because in our culture, we confuse between pain and suffering. We use the same vocabulary as if it was the same, which of course it isn't. That suffering is the negative reaction that we have to what life gives us. And you would think, since pain is known since the dawn of mankind, that it is uh, uh, known to science, but it has been only introduced recently to the medical community. And it took Professor John Bonica, a professor in anesthesiology and pain medicine, 60 years ago to start here at the University of Washington in Seattle, the first pain clinic in the world, and talk about the complexities, the biological, psychological, and social complexities of pain. And while he was going around talking about pain medicine, I also was sitting there thinking about my sustainable habits. Now, it took me 20 years later to confront pain in the battlefield, to understand that pain kills, that the stress, that the duress, physical and psychological of the battlefield will take a toll even on the best and bravest amongst us. And you can imagine what it does to me when 20 years later I see the advances in technology, I see the lollipops, the inhalers, the injections, the catheters, what we are able to do to a soldier that just three hours ago stepped on a mine, blew both his legs off, and that he's able to have two thumbs up. But the question comes is that when I see him six or nine months down the line, and these are all the painkillers that he's taking, all this, what you see on the table, are the painkillers that he's taking. Is that the way to do it? Is that the way to go when there's no more injury to heal and pain remains there as a disease? Is that what we should do? Now you need to know that we love our opioids. We constitute only 4% of population, but we consume 80%. 80%. 350 million people hoard for the rest of the 6.5. This is, we take thousands of times more than in Sub-Saharan Africa which I admit has the undertreatment of pain. Now, are we doing a good job? Of course not. The congressional report from the Institute of Medicine showed us that 100 million Americans suffer from chronic pain. So what does that mean? That means that everybody, everybody is suffering from the direct and indirect causes of pain because we all have a network of at least two people. At a cost of $635 billion, that is more than cancer, diabetes, and heart disease combined. Today, today, 50 people are going to die from an overdose of painkillers. So I've moved not from pain kills, pain killers kill. But it's not only deaths, it's the people that have to go into treatment for abuse, it's the emergency room visits, it is the misuse, it is the recreational use, the affluenza of having all this in our society. And so we created a generation, not Generation Z, but a generation prescription, Generation Rx, where we get our hair from our mom, our eyes from our dad, and our drugs from the medicine cabinet of grandma. 10% of our 10th graders, 12% of our 12th graders will admit that they took medication for fun. Now, in our lab, we were very interested to see what is the relationship between pain and stress. And so when you take an animal, and you take, let's say, a rat, and you squeeze their paw about 300 grams, they will say, ouch. That is called the pain threshold. What does stress do to that? You can see that it goes up. It goes up to 400. You have to press more to get that ouch. That is the normal response that the body has to stress. That is why soldiers continue to fight that I work 18 hours a day, that Olympic runners continue to run. And we know it's endorphins because when we give a medication that abolishes it, it goes away. Now what happens if we take a painkiller for fun? 
So for two hours, we're at bliss. Two hours, you have to squeeze up to 600 to get an ouch. We're the best. And then we have a whole week of a hangover at 100. But what a stress due to this. We become whiny. These rats are very, very whiny rats. That you touch them at 100 grams and they say, ouch. And so the relationship between pain, stress, and painkillers is not good. It gets even worse when we have pain. And it gets worse when we have repeated stresses again and again and again. So you have pain, you lose your job, you lose your insurance, you foreclose, you're deployed for the fourth or fifth time, we become as if we lose our endorphin system. And it's not good. It's not good to lose our endorphin system because it's all over the brain. This is an image that we have in our brain. The endorphin system is all over, and it is responsible for all our appetites, all our desires, all our good things, our happiness. We have lost our endorphins. So the result of this experiment that we've been doing the last 15 years, where we've confused treating pain as an injury like we did with the soldier, and pain as a disease when it's here and there's nothing else left to do, has of course created that clinical harm that 50 people are going to die today. And also 40,000 people are going to dabble a little bit with some painkillers. But also a cultural bankruptcy that we really believe that we can't go through life without medicalizing it. That we can't do sport without doping. We can't engage into an intimate relationship without treatment. We can't go through college without psychostimulants, and we cannot deal with pain without painkillers. So what's missing? How do we get out of this? And what I would like to offer you today is a new way of looking at things. So don't do anything differently. Just view it a little bit differently, okay? So for the last 25 years, patients have come to me and always say the same thing. I have pain. Okay, I have pain. They use it as a noun. So I'm here, pain is there, and I have a relationship with it. I like it, I don't like it, I want it, I don't want it, I uh, deserve it, I don't deserve it. It's almost like we're looking at something, like we're looking at a cat. It's going, doing something through our eyes and our brain. And that's what science is interested in. What's going on in our brain? And that creates this mental image of a cat and we all see the same cat. We all experience the same pain. And so what the scientific investigation is, nothing more than understanding what's in the brain. If we just understand what is going on in the brain, we will come up with a pill, we will come up with a device, and everything will be fine. And that subjective experience, the catness, or the aboutness, or the meaningfulness of that pain, that's not for us. We're not interested. And so, Let's try for a second to use pain not as a noun, but as a verb. Let's say for a minute, I am painting. I own this, and I pain. And so what happens is, yes, we see pain outside, and it does something in our brain, but it produces an experience, an individual, culture-sensitive, context-sensitive experience that we do very, very differently from each other. And so the slide to remember today is that pain is not something that you feel. It's not something that you're hopeless and you're helpless and it happens to you. And so my job as a therapist is to fix it. I need to cut it, burn it, stimulate it, freeze it. I'll give you a drug so you won't care about it. I'll convince you that maybe you're feeling something else. Pain is something that you do. Either you do it well and you do it poorly. And that's what we're doing research on doing research in our center, in our institute, to look at how can we understand people and transform their lives. And so I'll finish by saying that if we embrace this inactive approach, then we understand that not all pain relief is good, that these poppy seeds are not the secret of happiness. Pain is not an opioid deficient state, so not all pain relief is good, but we will also understand that not all pain even in the killing fields of Darfur, is bad. Thank you very much. <laughs>